What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing good and having an amazing day. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about budgeting. Now budgeting isn't something that many of us look forward to, and some people even hate the idea of it. But actually there's a common misconception that it needs to be a really complicated process, needs to be long-winded and a lot of hard work. But in actual fact, it doesn't need to be at all. So today I'm gonna to show you guys a really simple and easy to follow concept that you can use to start budgeting your money and set yourself up for financial freedom. Now it's easy to think that being financially independent is just for the 1% earning those huge salaries each month. But in actual fact, I don't think this is true at all. I believe the biggest game changer in being able to become financially independent all comes down to budgeting and how well you can save money. And although having a large income will help for sure, it alone won't be the factor that allows you to be fully financially free and never have to worry about money. I know so many people that are earning hundreds of thousands per year and due to high expenditure and lack of simple money management, their money just disappears as fast as they're earning it and have nothing left to save. Whereas alternatively, I know people that aren't technically massive earners in terms of their day job and salary, but through clever money management and discipline, they've built themselves up to a stage over time where they don't even need to worry about money and they're no longer reliant on their single source of income. So with that all in mind, a strategy we're going to be looking at today is the 50-30-20 rule. And I believe it really can be applicable to anyone out there, no matter what your income is. Now, just before we dive straight into it, I know it is a bit cheeky asking before the video has really even started, but I'd really appreciate it if you guys could smash that like button, as it does really help me out with the YouTube algorithm and just allows YouTube to share these videos to more people that might find them useful or interesting. And if you are new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click that bell so you never miss a video. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it. Okay, so the 50-30-20 rule. What is it and how does it work? So it's basically a really simple guideline that you can use to allocate your post-tax income into three simple categories. So those categories are needs, wants, and financial goals. So straight off the bat, it makes it a whole lot more simple than some other budgeting strategies, which can get really complicated and time consuming having too many categories. And so with this, you can create a really clean, simple budget that's not gonna spend you hours tracking your spending and allocating different amounts of money to different things. You just have these three categories to allocate your spending to. Okay, so the first allocation of needs. These are essentially expenses that you can't avoid and you can't live without. So for example, this could include things like your monthly rent, mortgage repayments, household bills and essentials, travel expenses, basic food and clothes, and basically anything else you can think of that is an essential to your daily life. Now a realistic expectation of these need expenses will come to about 50% of most people's income. So using this strategy, we allocate 50% of our monthly income to need expenses, as they're simply unavoidable and it's impossible to live without spending any money at all. Okay, so the next category we have are the want expenses. So these are basically all of the things that we spend money on each month to make our lives more enjoyable. They aren't essential for survival, but they bring pleasure to our day-to-day -day life. So these could include things like eating out in restaurants, going to social events, spending money on hobbies and activities, as well as holidays, maybe designer clothes or other household luxuries. So with this rule, we're gonna allocate 30% of our monthly income to this category. I think for the majority of people out there, it's impossible to lead a fun and fulfilling life without spending any money on yourself. And although it's a nice idea to utilize as many free fun activities as possible, the reality is that most things cost money. And I believe it should be embraced to an extent to basically go out there, have fun, and spend some money in the process. Okay, so now we're onto the final category, which is the financial goals, which we're gonna allocate that remaining 20% of our income to. So these financial goals can vary massively depending on what your end goal is and what you really value. So this category could be broken down further into things like everyday savings, saving for a house deposit, saving on behalf of your children, putting money into investments, or maybe a retirement fund. But as far as I'm concerned, this saving portion is the most important part of your budget because I truly believe that saving money consistently over time is the key to unlocking financial freedom. Right, so that's basically how the 50, 30, 20 rule works. But now let's look at how you can actually implement it in your life. So I think the easiest way to implement this is to basically utilize banking app features. So with all of the top mobile banks out there like Starling, Monzo and Revolut, you can actually break down your money within the one bank account into different partitions. And so basically what I would do is split up your income every month into wants, needs and savings, and then basically spend from each of these individual pots. Even a lot of the high street banks now have these features as well. So obviously if the bank you use has a feature like this, you could just use it in there. Alternatively, you could set up three individual bank accounts and do it that way. But I feel that physically splitting up the money in this way is really important to set those boundaries of what you can spend your money on each month. And absent-mindedly, just having these fixed amounts that you can spend each month on certain things will just make it a whole lot less tempting to spend all of your money. And so by making the simple move of just separating your savings away from your everyday spending, that money will no longer be a temptation to spend as well as it's truly out of sight and out of mind. 
And from my experience, the whole process of dipping into your savings once it's separated to then spend that money just fills you with guilt. So it gets you into really good habits and you actually start to enjoy saving. So as with anything, this strategy isn't perfect. And although I think it's a fantastic foundation to build a budget from, there are some limitations. So the first being that the 50, 30, 20% split won't actually work perfectly for everyone. And depending on your individual circumstances, like what you earn, where you live, if you have any dependents, this could actually affect how you actually have to split up your income. And so for many people out there, you might need to track your spending for a couple of months to see exactly what your expenses are and see how you can adjust the percentages to find something that will actually work for you. But that being said, if you are new to managing your finances, I do think that the 50, 30, 20 split is a really great target to try and meet as saving 20% of your income each month could help you massively in the future. Next up, I also think that you shouldn't undervalue the importance of saving. So what I mean by this is if you're leading a fun and fulfilled life, uh, but you're not actually spending 30% of your income on wants, there's no reason that you should increase this spending because in all honesty, it's not gonna make you any happier. And I'd say instead, just try and use it as an opportunity to save more. This then leads on to the next point where I think it's so important to save more while you can. So what I mean by this is that if you have any opportunity to save more than 20% of your income, you should really jump at the chance. So one example of this could be if you just finished school and you've got your first job, but you're still living at home with your parents, the chances are your monthly expenses would be a lot lower than they would be if you'd moved out and were living on your own. So instead of just spending all of this money, it's much better to try and utilize this opportunity to save more and maybe save for a house deposit. So when you do come to move out, you have money there to buy a property rather than just rent. Whereas if you moved out straight away and started renting somewhere, the chances are your monthly expenses will be much higher. And if you decide you want to buy a property in the future, it will just make it a much more longer process to try and save for that deposit. The final thing I think is really important to consider is just the simple fact that you shouldn't overlook your needs. So sometimes I believe there can be a bit of a crossover between the needs and the wants in your spending. And I think there's always possibility to reduce your needs expenses by just living a bit more frugally. We all tend to think that we need certain things in life, but the fact is there's almost always a cheaper option out there. So don't just think that all of your need expenses aren't reducible because there's almost always a way that you could save a little bit of money. So for example, you could save money on your monthly electricity bills if you simply just shop around and switch your provider. Or alternatively, if you need a car to get to and from work, do you really need to have the newest, flashiest, fastest car? Or could you get away with something that's a little bit older, slower, and maybe doesn't look as nice? Because if you can, things like this are a great way to start saving some extra money. Right, so that basically covers everything. But now you guys might be interested in how I personally use this budgeting strategy and how I tailor it to my own lifestyle. So just like everyone else, I also have living expenses, which are just impossible to admit completely. And so that is about 50% of my income gone straight away. But where I change it up a bit is with the wants and the savings proportion. So rather than spending 30% on wants, I try to reduce this where possible to about 10%. And with the remaining 40%, I just increase the amount I save. So I'm really strict with transferring 40% of my income every single month out into savings. And then I actually put this into stock market investments. From doing this over the last few years, this has had a massive impact on improving my financial stability. Although at first it seemed really difficult to reduce my want spending down to just 10%, over time I realized that before I was just spending money on unnecessary things that I didn't actually want or value all that much. And so with that remaining 10%, that all just goes to really valuable experiences that are actually fulfilling. Now, interestingly, from just having this attitude for just a few years and saving consistently and investing in the stock market, this has had a huge positive effect on my financial stability. So due to the returns from my investments and compound interest, I'm now in a situation where I'm less reliant on my income and my investments actually act as like a second income where even some months I'm earning more from investments than I am from my day job. And it also goes a lot further because it's completely tax free because it's invested within an ISA. But the hard part in the first place when it comes to investing is just getting that pot of money in the first place to be worth investing and getting a decent return. Now, I don't wanna to go too much into stock market investing within this video, but generally I make around 20% per year. So if you are interested in learning more about stock market investing, I've got loads of videos on my channel. So I'll leave a few links down below in the description for you guys to check out if you want to. And I'll be making lots more to come in the future. But I honestly think this is the real game changer because if I never saved any money, I wouldn't have this extra income and I'd be totally reliant on my day job and any other sources of income. But there we have it. That basically covers everything for today, guys. Now I know budgeting isn't always the most exciting thing in the world, but I really hope you guys did enjoy this video and found it useful in some way. 
If you did enjoy the video, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could smash that like button down below as it does really help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and click that bell so you never miss a video. I'd also love to know what you guys think about this budgeting strategy. Have you heard of it before or do you even use it yourself? Make sure to drop your thoughts down below in the comments. And also if you have any questions or feedback for me, I make sure to respond to all comments. But with all that being said, take it easy guys and keep saving.